rapport where you get into, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen guys. Here's an example. I was in Poland and there was a guy who came from France, good guy. And we were going to meet him out at this uh, lounge that was next to the bar we're all going to go to. We're going to start there with drinks. And he was there first and we walked in. There's a square bar here and he's sitting on the back of the bar right where Josh is. And he's got these three Polish girls, beautiful in sequin dresses, all lined up. And he's like this, with his, swirling his drink, and he's talking to this one here on the stool, right? He's, he's sitting over there, the one, two, three girls, and him. These two girls are paired up, and this girl's like talking to him, and she's smiling. Oh, yeah, yeah, where are you from? And whatever. And I'm watching this, and my friend said, oh, look, he's in. That's good. And I said, not good. I mean, shouldn't say that, but it's, no, you watch what happens. And he's sitting there smiling and buying him drinks and raising his glass and talking and then it was time for them to go so the girls got up and started to pay their bill and gather the coats and he was now the, and he saw us but he didn't want to admit that he saw us so he's like so we didn't break up his set and um and so he's sitting there looking smiling the girls are getting up and he's like now he's the this hanger on type of guy because you know he didn't leave first sort of thing and so he's like kind of looking and then he realized okay yeah um i'm awkward now oh and now he notices us so he gets up and he comes over and he's smiling. And he says, yeah, it's yeah they're hot. Thing. Good, good job, man. And I said, watch this, though. And sure enough, those girls came around the square bar like this. And we're standing there. And, and my friend's friend is, you know, stirring his drink like this and smiling as they walk by. Like this. And they're like, to us, you know, sequin dresses, heading over to the club, which we were going to go to as well. So we wandered over there as well, and it's a big club that has a circulation. Like all the best clubs have a movement. If you can't take a tour, you have to go to the back bar and come back, it's lame. So this had a kind of a circulation. So sure enough, these girls wanted to be seen in their dresses and dance together and be seen, right? But every time that they would come into our proximity, my friends like this, you know, to the point, and they're like, they would walk by us like in little bunches like they do and wave like this. And he's like trying to talk to them as they're going by. And um, to the point where they started to avoid us. So you can see that they're like, they see us standing over here and then they wander off the other way. Because he didn't, in, he didn't engage, he, he got into this rapport friend thing. You know what I mean? And it's not good. I'm not saying it's not, you might find your wife doing that. I don't know. But in general, this, this is not something that's good. Like, um, they didn't polarize. Huh? They didn't polarize. There's no polarity. Right. There was no sexual attraction to him because he was just job interview, having a conversation with her, and gets. You guys know what I mean. You get talking to a girl and you get dragged into this conversation. How you're, you don't know how to take it in the other direction, right? And so the best thing is to get in and out. Just say something strong. Hey, I like you. What's your name? I didn't see you before. My buddies and I are over here, over here. Remember, a guy said, well, how do you get phone numbers that way? Um, you get abundance that way. Abundance is, you know, phone numbers fall off trees when you have abundance. You know? The thing I wanted to do was, like, have, was fill my life with women. And I, and I did. If you, anybody, you've been in my house in Bucharest, my house is full of girls all the time. And I want that. That's what I like. And, um, but I guess what I'm trying to hammer here is our sexual nature that we have hidden under a bushel, you know? We're taught that it's bad and it's not. And like I said, when I'm talking to a guy, my energy's up here, my, my voice is up here, and there's something in me that actually, and I'll tell you this, don't do it, but this is kind of what I do. <laughs> It's like, I will actually kind of, you know, if a guy wants to fight you a little bit or, or if they're getting, they're, you kind of like get this little bristling in you and you're kind of, you get this a thrusting energy. I do that with girls. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, in, it's infinitely small. They can't, like I said, the girls come in the mall, I kind of lunge into her and I let her go. Lunge. Not really. Just, I'm, I'm exaggerating. So if I'm talking to a couple of girls, I'm kind of, hey, boom, boom, 
Boom, hey, hey, didn't meet you two. Come here, come here. Come see my friends. Everything's directed down. And my voice is directed down. Boom. Brian and, and, and Dave and these other coaches are teaching guys how to get a lower feeling, right? Because I, I was always top heavy. You know that feeling where you go up to a girl, hey, I'd like to uh, see you again. It was nice talking to you. Would, would you want to like, maybe see me again sometime? And she's like, oh, it's so sweet. I have a boyfriend. We go, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. I, di I, I didn't know you had a boyfriend. I didn't mean it. You know? We apologize because she's got a boyfriend. We're top heavy. We flinch. I didn't mean anything by it. Yes, you did. I'm married. Okay, I understand. In another time and place, you would be my lover, right? I respect. So I say, I don't flinch. I don't, I don't change my energy. I say, I understand you're married. I respect that 100%. In another time and place, you can feel that. You'd be my lover, right? If she didn't feel it before, she does now. <laughs> you feel that right there. Yeah, you feel it. Um, so my lesson in life was how to uncover, because you, you have it. It's not like you have to develop it. You know, it's the thing about watching porn is like, you know, when the screen goes dark, all you see is reflected is you. There's no, there's no beloved. There's no face of the beloved, which is what we want. We want that, you know. Um, and I'm not, I don't judge anything. You know, what, watch whatever midget porn you want. I don't care. Um, but... But we have it. We have this desire. And it, like I said, it's God-given. We're created that way. How, how can we how can gain say that? It has to be part of who you're experiencing and who you are. You know? And not apologizing for it. It doesn't mean you're this, you know, humping girls' legs in a bar. Right? It doesn't mean that. It means that there's something in you that has, remember I said yesterday, the combination of empathy and authority. And authority is this guy. Hey. You guys look pretty, but I actually do it with my hands. I push energy with my hands. You feel that? Yeah, you do. <laughs> right? And they can feel it. They're like straightening the skirt. <laughs> I leave nothing to chance.